my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the normal seasonal market. So we're going to go through the market. What to expect over the next few months? More importantly, we're going to basically kind of walk you through what to expect. Well, really up to the next six months, looking at seasonally, what buyers need to be looking at, what sellers need to be looking at. And then we're going to go through some of the metrics to let you know where we're going in real time. So remember to subscribe. Hey, that's how you let us know that you like what you're hearing. Make sure you ring the bell so that uh, you're alerted when we're doing our market updates. And yes, we're doing our market update a tad bit early today because we've got a lot of activity and yeah, the buyers are back as expected. And if you've been watching previous episodes, you would know that towards the end of September, our kind of mid August slowdown, which is normal students getting back in school, especially for the first time in a year or so. Last minute vacation, since the leaves are changing, uh, it's a little blustery out there. It's very fall today. And now this is normal. So then we start to see an upswing and we will see that till mid-December. So we're going to uh, be doing our, our video today a little bit early because, well, guess what? We have a lot of folks out there. The entire team is booked out doing showings and doing different things today uh, to make sure that, well, our clients are taken care of, which is the most important. All right, so with that, let's hit this really quick. Mid-September, mid and we've actually got some really good numbers. So funny enough, our inventory, so you might remember last week, our inventory was up, uh, wasn't surprising, uh, but boop, we brought it back down. Why? Well, we had 1,593 homes come on market, which is a few hundred less than it was seven days ago, because remember, we're doing our seven-day running average. Gosh, it's almost like the stock market. But anyway, we've got our uh, pended, but look at our pended, 2,108. <laughs> that cracks me up because we also have 1,621 that went off market. So technically, we are drawing down inventory, which is consistent with what we're seeing. Again, we see that match. We see the buyers following the, the new on market trend really, really well. Uh, it's just the way it is. And when you have seven to 10 days of inventory, that's what you would expect. There were, uh, oh my gosh, it was hilarious. I had a conversation with somebody who, who said, oh yeah, the market's going to crash. It's, 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 it's on its way down. And you can tell because inventory is on its way up and everything else. And I said, really? I said, I have to ask, why do you feel this way? What, where, what metrics are you looking at that are giving this indication? And, you know, they were citing some information on uh, the media and, and whatnot. And, and I said, well, you understand that that's July. Uh, and they're, they're reporting on a national average. But, you know, understand we're one of the top markets, you know, across the United States. And here, here are some metrics to take a look at. Now, what do you think of this? And, and this guy looked at it and said, well, you know, that's, that's completely different. And I said, it is, isn't it? And he's like, yeah, I got to quit watching the news. <laughs> I started to laugh and I said, okay, you need to watch my Saturday show because there's no strings attached and you get real time information because it's the middle of September. It's not July. Let's understand that. So again, subscribe, let us know what you think. Ask questions. We had some great questions. In fact, we're going to be going over a very important question here at, uh, at the end about schools. Okay. So anyway, back to here. So active, both month over month, meaning, uh, you know, uh, uh, 2020 and 2021, the inventory is the same as expected. All right. So year over year, we're up 11.2%. <laughs> that's only a few hundred homes. That's not, that's not a big number, just to let you know, because our numbers are so small. And when we come over here, month over month, uh, you know, uh, I guess year over year for the same month, at 10.8. Pended, we're up 9.9% year over year, and uh, we're only up 2.8% for the same time in September, from the 1st to the 15th, 16th. Over here, our solds are up 18.9, but we're down 5%. All right, so September is playing a little bit of a catch-up. Are we going to surpass what we did last year? 
there is a high probability because we're really starting to see a lot of momentum. We are starting to see a lot of buyer activity. Uh, you know, homes that are well priced are still going off market in seven to 10 days, hands down. Listen guys, if you price your home correctly, <laughs> all of those that uh, for the, uh, hang on a second, for the 425 people that reduce their price, good job. Okay, at least you recognize that there's an issue. Uh, the 35 that canceled and the 134, that would be 169 people that either expired or canceled. Hey, listen, uh, in a low inventory market, okay, we're not talking about the healthy market of four to six months of inventory. We have seven to 10 days of inventory. And if your home doesn't sell, you need to reevaluate what you just did, okay, hands down. And your message to market or your price, which again, there are only three reasons a home doesn't sell. Price, location, and condition. Now, if your condition and your, and your location are bad, there is one thing that fixes it, and that is price. Sentimental equity, guys, look, I know. Please do not take this personally. Please do not take this wrong. I'm so sorry. Sentimental equity has zero value. <laughs> sorry, it doesn't matter. The buyers who come in do not have your sentiment. Sorry. One of my uh, favorite lieutenants, uh, Dave Hale, used to tell me, you got to say the word they don't want to hear. Sorry. There you go. Please do not include sentimental equity in the value of your home. It does not matter. Okay. What you need to do is to remove yourself and be objective. Your home, all of those homes expired and, ex and canceled that did not sell. Uh, it should never have happened. Seven to 10 days of inventory. Inventory is really less than 20% of what it was in 2018. Well, yeah, it's less than 20% or right about there. Okay. Understand <laughs> there's no better time to sell your home because the pent up buyer demand is still there and there's no inventory. Hmm. Okay. Moving on. When we talk about mortgage rates, we're still holding at 3.125, understand. So um, uh, I'll have Marie post this link again, but getting some really great questions. Uh, when we talk about the five questions you need to ask when getting a mortgage quote, when getting a rate quote, you need to make sure you are watching that information. All right, uh, you need to watch that video. There are five things because I'll tell you, I can't tell you, well, let's see, I can't tell you. I had six text messages this last week, just saying, oh my gosh, I watched your video. I almost made a mistake. So I'm going to have Marie post that video again, because guys, super important to watch. You must understand that when you're getting quoted rates, Hey, listen, they're marketing to you. They, they know you're looking for these really low rates, but understand there's a cost to that, or there are program limitations. You must pay attention. All right. Or you will get hot and it will be too late to change course. Then you're going to find out you actually spent more money than you would have with a different alternative. It was interesting. I was having a really great conversation with Dan Golden at Cornerstone as uh, he was quoting me these rights today. Uh, you know, and he's like, oh, you know, it's amazing. Some of the, the changes and programs that are out there, there are some pretty amazing things. As an example, if you're interested in a 10% down jumbo, with a loan amount up to $2 million with no mortgage insurance and competitive pricing as far as interest rates, you need to reach out to us because there's a niche program for up to 2 million, meaning jumbos over the $762,000 loan balance, right? To make it conforming. Uh, and it is 10% down, no MI, no reserves. Interesting. Niche program, let me know if you're interested. That's going to be kind of a cool program. Anyway, I don't know if anybody else is offering it. So it's not us personally. All right. So as we go through this and we talk about mortgage rates, things to keep in mind, you need to keep an eye on the feds. Make sure you're watching and listening to are the feds tapering off on their purchase of mortgage backed securities? Are they making that change? If they start pulling back, I guarantee you rates are going to start going up. They're going to hedge them uh, to fight inflation and all of the other crazy things that uh, 
trillions of ideas that our government is foolishly looking at. But anyway, watch mortgage-backed securities. That will help you understand. And if you're on the edge and you are under contract, understand that uh, you know you can look at a 30-day or a 60-day lock on a loan, but you can also pay to extend that lock, especially if rates start hedging upwards, but you have maybe a delayed closing for one reason or another. Okay, Keep that in mind. That's a financial decision, and there's a lot of different ways to consider that, right? Uh, our next season. Okay, so as we get closer to October, our market, our real estate market starts to pick up speed, and it will do so until about mid-December. Now, last year, we pushed all the way through December pretty aggressively. I don't expect that this year. I expect things to be a little bit different, and I am expecting, again, the seasonality to come into play, which means about mid-December, really it starts to slow down pretty eh, right about thanksgiving ish right we start to see that slow down we see a little push between thanksgiving and about mid-december then we then we really do really slow down and even we did last year we slowed down uh until about mid-february okay perfect understand and plan for it if you're a buyer believe it or not best time to buy your home why again it's like the summer slowdown you actually have less competition and more sellers that are more negotiable. Sorry, sellers that are listening to this, understand, price yourself correctly, and you will still look at multiple offers, even in a slower timeline. You just must be objective and move yourself personally. I guess I can't just say that anymore clearly. All right, so understand, our market is still moving forward. Our inventory is still horrifically low, seven to 10 days, remember, four to six months of inventory is a healthy market, okay? We have seven to 10 days, not enough inventory. So, and when we have things like this, where we keep drawing it down more than what we have, okay, sellers, <laughs> now's your time. Buyers are back, get on the market. All right, schools. Somebody said, hey, George, I'm really thinking, uh, you know, buying a home and, you know, how important are schools because, you know, how, is that going to affect my future value? And the answer is yes. Okay. Yes. Schools, better schools command better home prices. Why? Well, because people want to be in better schools, but here's the, however, please understand. Here's the, however, okay. A few years ago, uh, we had in uh, Lake Washington school district, you know, a lot of people were looking at uh, an elementary school, man, elementary. I'm going to give you an example here. Okay. And this is the Take this with a grain of salt. Be mindful of school reports, but take this with a grain of salt. All right. So uh, everybody wanted to be in either Mann Elementary or Rockwell because Einstein was lowered. So Mann Elementary and Rockwell, uh, you know, they were tens, you know, nine, ten great schools. And people were willing to pay 60, 80, 100,000 dollars more to be in one of those schools. And our caution to them is, you know, versus like Einstein, which was, uh, I think, a seven, right? And, you know, the caution was, is, hey, listen, you know, school reports change every year. Be mindful of this. Be very careful. You know, um, it's a business decision and whatnot. Well, the following year, greatschools.org, which is a Gates Foundation program, which a lot of folks used, changed their algorithm, changed how they did things. And so, like, Mann Elementary and Rockwell Elementary, whoop their scores drop significantly. Okay, well, they just made a financial decision for a lot of people, right? Because now where they were paying additional monies to be in that certain school, now Mann Elementary and Rockwell were at the same level of Einstein. Okay, well, that's a big deal. Okay, we're talking again, 60, 70, 80, $100,000. That's a big deal. So as you were looking at schools, right, seven or better is above average, right? Seven is above average and, you know, obviously 10 is 10, right? But understand that that changes each year. And if you're looking at buying a home and you're saying, oh, I want to be in this school because this is a 910. Well, in five years, that could be a seven. Next year, it could be a seven. The next year after that could be an eight. Okay. So understand you look at a longer running history other than just the current one. So I'm going to have Marie post some of these links for you guys. And yes, schools are important. And I totally get that. Okay. Private schools, everything else. That is totally important for those that have students. 
get that. Or even somebody who's looking at a rental property who wants a higher demand area. But make sure that you're looking at more than just that one year. Uh, Schooldigger.com, greatschools.org, uh, uh, neighborhoodscout.com, and niche.com. <clears throat> I'm going to have Marie post those for you guys. Those are all schools, uh, all school reporting uh, websites that you can go to and look at more than one. Okay, and then look at the longer history. So just be mindful when you're doing that and don't just base it off of one year. All right. Okay. So, yes, the buyers are back. Yes, we're seeing homes going off market. Yes, you need to, if you're a seller, get on market now because you have until about the end of, uh, end of November, mid-December, and then we're going to really take a slowdown. Make sure you're pricing well. Buyers, make sure that you're getting the correct quotes and that you're understanding the rate quote that you're getting. And again, if you're interested in a 10% a down, non-MI, uh, loan amount up to $2 million, and no reserves, you need to give us a call. Ping us, let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll get you hooked up with those folks. Uh, there's no strings attached, there's no cost, uh, but uh, we only want the serious people. I don't want to post that information generically. Uh, if you're interested in that, let us know. We'll get that to you. In the meantime, have an absolutely fabulous fall day. <laughs> Stay dry. It is going to be a little blustery, and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.